Hello. <laughs> I guess you can hear me better now. Um, I felt like I heard a word from the Lord, and I kind of ignored it earlier this service. And this song had the exact word in it. Um, so in the Bible, with Gideon, he was hiding. He was afraid of the people surrounding them. And the Lord sent an angel to him, and he said, Mighty warrior. And Gideon was not a mighty warrior by any means. He was hiding. And he said, I'm from the least family. I'm a nobody. And he said, mighty warrior. And I just felt like first, I don't know for who today, or maybe for all of us, maybe for me. You may not be a mighty warrior, but God is calling you to be. Amen. Amen. And it might be de depression. It might be... Um, you know, addictions. I don't know what it is, but God is calling you to stand up even though you're not there now. He's saying, come mighty warrior. I will equip you. I will go before you and I will walk with you through this moment. Amen. Mighty warrior. Amen. Amen. Rise up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Gideon knew he couldn't do it in his strength. Gideon had no confidence in himself. And also in the passage that we're singing, the first song in, in, in Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones, it was, it was overwhelmingly death. It was overwhelmingly impossible. And God asked Ezekiel the question, can these bones live? And he didn't have much confidence in that. And, and he gave the answer, God, only you know. That's the right answer. God, only you know. He didn't have confidence in himself to say, yeah. He said, only you know. Then the Lord said, speak to the bones. Church, whatever those areas are that you're saying, I can't do this. These are areas, they're too big. I don't, it's impossible. That's too big of a thing. I, it's overwhelming. I believe the Lord's saying, speak to the bones. Speak to the area. Speak to those things in your lives that are, I don't know how that's going to happen. It's impossible, God. Speak to those bones and command life. Speak to those bones. He said, cause those bones, tell those bones to come together. Cause those bones to breathe. It says, and then there was a shaking and a rattling. And I believe we're in that spot. There's a rattling happening. There's a rattling happening. We're not there, but it's rattling. And I like that sound. That's a good sound, but we're not done. And we're not gonna reach that in our own strength. We're not gonna reach that in our own ability. It's gonna come through the, the power of God in us and that power is only gonna be released in our weakness. It's gonna be released in the areas that we know we don't have the strength and we don't have confidence. I don't have this, the schedule, the agenda, the plan. I haven't been in this territory before. Good, you're gonna have to rely on him. You're gonna have to know, I don't have the skill set to do that. Good, you're gonna rely on his skill set. I don't have the vision to see that good. You're going to rely on his vision. I've never heard a word like that before. Good. You're not going to know how to deal with that. Prophesy to those bones and say live. Amen. 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 And in your weakness, that, it's such a beautiful thing, the, the, the combination of these songs, how, how the Holy Spirit organizes and orchestrates. I don't know why I get surprised by it. I'm not that surprised, but it's just awesome. I just sometimes want to laugh. I'm like... God, you're awesome. So thank you for being obedient and sharing that word. Yes, yes. that's how many else, how many other people were hearing that word? That was, and, and I, I was about to get it, but I said, Lord said, just wait. Just wait. It's so awesome when you're about to share a word and someone else shares it. I'm not upset by that. That's so encouraging. You're like, yes, there's other people hearing the same voice. There's a, is anyone else hearing a shaking, a rattling? Don't stop now. Speak. Speak into those areas. Prophesy life. Amen. Thank you, worship team. You guys are killing it. There should be no dry bones up in here today. Amen. Life. Live. <laughs> I must speak life in that area. If you have your Bibles... Um, turn them to Ephesians chapter 6, and um, 
we're, we are still in, I want you to keep all of this in your mind, if you can. Um, we're still talking about not quenching the Holy Spirit. The only way we're going to accomplish what God wants us to do, the only way we're going to fulfill what God wants us to do is we cannot afford to quench the Holy Spirit. We're going to have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us into these areas that we don't know how to function. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. We, we haven't been in this place before, and we're going to need the Holy Spirit to lead us. And We don't want to quench what he's doing. Amen? Amen? So we're still in that mindset. We're not despising prophecies. We're not despising those prophetic words. We're not despising and what God's speaking to us. We are going to be wise because in this time, there's a lot of stuff going on, so we're going to test all things. We're going to do what Jesus said. We're going to do what the apostles Paul told us to do and to test things. And we're, we're not going to be gullible. And then we're going to hold fast. When we've decided and we've come to the conclusion that that's a word from the Lord, that is a good word. It lines up with Scripture. It, it is, it is, I'm hearing confirmations. And church, is anyone else like me? I've been saying this for about the last year that I feel like I'm born again. I feel like I got, like, I feel like, you know, when you first got saved, it was like the Lord would just supernaturally, like, show you confirmations. And it was like everywhere you turned, there was like confirmation, confirmation. You'd be like, good God, that was crazy. This person confirmed it. That per the radio guy confirmed it. The, the, the news anchor confirmed. It's like, wow. And the Lord, everywhere you're going, you're just receiving those confirmations. And then you grow up a little bit, and the Lord, the Lord starts taking some of those things away because he's like, now I want you to learn that you don't have to have 20 confirmations so that you would understand, I'm telling you, I want you to now learn the still, small voice. Like, and that, everything that he does to you, that is awesome. But it's been so fun. Like this last year, it's like I'm saved brand new again, and there's like, he just brings confirm. I'm not asking for him. He just confirms things. And I think when he's really wanting you to do something and make sure that, that you understand it so you can press into it, he will give those prophetic words, right? He will bring someone along to bring confirmation. And I'm seeing that stuff happen. It's like Stevie Wonder could see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you couldn't miss it. Like, you're able to go like, I am very responsible now. I'm very responsible to this word because it is being confirmed. How many know that when, you, when your dad says something over and over, it's important? I'm pretty sure he wants you to do it. So put your seatbelts on. We're going to keep listening and obeying the Holy Spirit no matter who it hair lips. <laughs> That's another way to say who it upsets. <laughs> We're going to keep listening to the Holy Spirit. We're going to keep following what he's doing. And just in case you forgot, when you do what Jesus says to do, and you follow where he says to go, and you pursue like he says to pursue, you're going to make some people mad. That, that's not my goal in life, but it's just going to naturally happen. Because Jesus walked this thing out perfectly, did everything he heard the Father say, he did everything he saw the Father do, and he made a lot of people upset with him by being perfect, by being love incarnate, by being the truth in front of people. And they crucified him over it. And they, they tried to kill him multiple times before they ever accomplished it. So put your seatbelt on. We're following Jesus. Yay. The most glorious things, the most miraculous. He said, there will be even greater miracles that are going to happen through you. Amen. Someone needs to be excited about that. <laughs> like, how come you're excited about the hard, hard stuff and not excited about the good stuff? In the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the hardness, in the midst of the opposition, the glory of God is going to increase. Amen. And you're going to see more and more signs and wonders and miracles. It's going to surpass the book of Acts. Amen. I'm preaching better than you're listening. <laughs> it's going to be better. The, every, everything going on in this crazy world right now, if you've heard me say this many times, and I... I I plead, I, I begged already, so I'm going to plead with a lot of us. If you can, turn off the news. If you can, get off of social media. This is the truth. You, you don't look for the truth in the false. You can't find the truth in the false. And Fox News isn't the truth. I think enough of us have seen that QAnon isn't the truth. 
How many things did they say were going to happen that didn't happen? So how many things you got to go like, they're quacks. And anything that's not the truth isn't from God. If it's not the truth, it's not from God. So quit listening to that because what the devil wants to do is to get us, and, and this is what I see for me. When I listen to the news, I start to think in the natural. My natural man starts to be affected, and lies are going to have an effect. Yeah, you get discouraged. You go, oh my gosh, this is awful. This is... Now, when I read from this, and I'm not listening to the other, and I'm, I'm not telling you guys to do something I'm not doing right now. I hope you understand that. Like, I'm excited about it because it's true. Like, I get to see more and more. The more I listen to this, the more I feel myself on the truth, the more I don't go, well, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. I go, everything's falling into place just like he said. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. When I don't need to watch the news to tell me what's going to happen with Russia, Ukraine, with Israel. I don't need to watch the news for that. He's already told me. I can, I can, I can see the truth, and I can prepare from the truth. And the truth sets us free. Why do you think the enemy wants us to listen to lies? Because he wants us in bondage. We, we're we're going to be in self-preservation mode. Oh my gosh, what are, what are we going to do for the food? And, and I'm not saying to be wise. Yeah, that looks. I'm not talking about tribulation. I'm talking about our own stinking government. All kinds of food plants going down. Trucks, diesel trucks. We're making it illegal for truck. I mean, at some point, that stuff's going to have a result. Now, in light of that, my Bible tells me to consider the birds of the air. They don't even, I'm pretty sure Jesus knows what he's talking about. They don't store up in huge barns. He loves them and provides for them every single day. How much more will he provide for us, his children? Like, so that's the truth. I want that meditating and speaking in my life. I need to have that confidence of the truth. Because if I'm not feeding on all the lies and I'm just focusing and feeding on the truth, there's a confidence and there's a peace that surpasses all knowledge. I don't need all knowledge. I need his knowledge. Are you with me? Like, this is where we're headed. Like, and I'm aware it, in, in the natural, I want to freak out. In the natural, I can't watch the news because I don't necessarily freak out. I get angry. I, like, I don't like being lied to. I don't like being talked to like I'm stupid. And if you sit there and watch the news, you're being talked to like you're stupid, and you're being lied to. And you keep watching, you're just saying, tell me more. Like, I can't handle it. I, I try sometimes. I'm like, you know, I kind of need to know what's going on. And the more I'm like, no, I don't. I already know what's going on. Yes. I know what's going on. Everything's falling into place. The Bible tells us that when we see certain things happening, he said, it will be in the last days as it is in the days of Noah. Well, I don't know if you've read your Bible, but it's Noahic. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I just made it up, but it works. <laughs> Make me a t-shirt. <laughs> it's getting kind of Noahic out there. <laughs> It's like that. That's where we're at. So I can know we're in the last days. I can know we're in the, the, the end of the age. This age is coming to a close. I can know because his words told me that, so I can prepare accordingly. Amen? Amen? I don't have to watch the news to tell me that. I watch the news, and I'm, I'm really frustrated. And I'm wanting to do things that aren't Christ-like. No, seriously, I'm just saying, like, I can't have the mind of Christ under the influence of lies. Right. I'm going to do things that are not Christ-like. So I don't know if you can do it. God bless you. You can be the one who has the ability to, like, sort all that stuff out and still have the peace of God and still, like, walk in love. Like, God bless you. You're the one that God's assigned to tell me what's going on. No, I'm serious because I've, I've tried. I've prayed. I feel like the Lord's like, Stop. 
right? You know, if you keep sticking your hand in a socket and you get electrocuted, at some point you got to be like, I got to be smart enough to quit sticking my freaking finger in a light socket. Lord, protect me. He's like, how about just quit sticking your finger in there? <laughs> now, some people can do that, and they don't get shocked. I'm not that guy. We're, holy smokes. <sighs> we got to test things. we got to hold fast to that which is good. I don't know too many things outside of this that are good. I don't even have to test this. It's, it's good. Now, some of y'all and myself and people's words and stuff, I got to test that. It's not always good. It's not always bad either. <laughs> Hold on to that which is good. How do we obtain? You're going to have to forget. First, you got to realize you haven't arrived yet. I haven't arrived yet. I got to forget some things. Forget those things, pressing on towards what's ahead. I haven't arrived. All the good things I've done, I can't carry those with me. Let go of it. That was the past. I'm going towards this direction. So lighten up. Free yourself from the past, good or bad. Forget what's behind. Press on towards what's ahead. We looked last week at how Paul taught Timothy to hold on to the prophecies given you and fight the good fight, Timothy. Hold on to those prophetic words. Don't let go of what God has spoken over your life, those dreams, those visions, those, some of those things that haven't happened yet. Hold on to them and use those as your fuel going forward in the fight. Amen? So that's where we're going to land today. The title of this message is, We Must Know His Armor and Our Weapons. We must know his armor and our weapons. So if you have your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 6, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not even attempting. I'm not trying to, to bring you things you've never heard or seen. I'm just, I'm just believing the Holy Spirit's. We're in a different time, are we not? So I believe the Holy Spirit's going to reveal some different things to you, not because I'm amazing, not because I, I went and was like on a search for new things, just because the Holy Spirit knows where we're at. Amen? So that's what we're going to do today. Um, we, we didn't get one piece of armor on. The first service, so. Um, but I feel like it was important what we did, so. Finally, my brethren, realize if you don't have your Bibles in front of you, this is the end of the book of Ephesians. This is the end of the letter. Paul was in prison when he wrote this letter, and as he's getting to the wrap, how many know as you're wrapping up the things, if you're speaking to a, p a people, as it's getting to the close, you're starting to put some pretty in important things down. And this is where Paul's at. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in yourself and in your power. What? Oh, it doesn't. Good thing you guys have your Bible. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You see, that doesn't flow too good with our natural. That's not a popular message today. Today, we want to tell people 21 reasons of how you can get to be strong. 10 steps of how to be stronger this year than you were last year. How to work out and build your chest. How to, like, in your strength. You can do it. Like, that's the, you've got the power. You can do it. That's a lie. You can't do it. How many, how many realize you cannot do this? Like, you're qualified. You are qualified by saying, I can't do this. You're qualified to be used by God now. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on. That requires you to do something. Put on the whole armor of God. That you. I'd circle every time there's a you. You may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now here comes a we. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Guess what? You have your own fights, and we have a war. We together are all in this war together, but we also have our own battles and our own fights. If you don't understand that, you are not in the fight. You're not in the war. I would love to have you on my team, but you're going to have to get saved. 
Because once you get saved, you're going to realize you're in a fight. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. He didn't say we don't taekwondo, we don't jujitsu, we don't box. You're going to see why that's important here in a minute. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I'm going to stop for just a minute. There's Church, we are heading into some territory where we are going to be confronting, um, and I just don't know how to say it, demons. I don't know if you know the war. This, this, what this tells me is I'm in a war, you're in a war, it's for real, and it's not flesh and blood. The enemy always wants us to think our battle is this flesh and blood. It's, it's the person who, Lord, help me. I know they're demon-possessed. They don't go over to the right lane. They drive 50 in the fast lane. <laughs> That's not flesh and blood. I need to understand that it's not flesh and blood. It's a spiritual influence. Me handling it in a natural way isn't going to do anything. We so want to try to fix things and look at things. And the enemy is so happy to have us wrestling with flesh and blood stuff because he knows you get caught up in that and he's going to win the spiritual. It's not the flesh and blood stuff. It's the spiritual. So I don't know how else to tell you this. Holy Spirit is holy. That leaves all the other spirits are unholy. There's a war. We're in a war. It's called a battle. It's good versus evil. See, this day and age, we want to complicate everything. It's not complicated. We're in a war. It's called good heaven versus evil hell. Heaven versus hell. Good versus evil. Light versus dark. Life versus death. That's the battle. And it's not, this, this is telling me it's not carnal. It's not flesh and blood. This battle ain't that. It's spiritual. So that means my enemy, the forces that I'm fighting against are demonic. It's just, it's what they are. Now hear me. I'm not trying to make everything because there's this whole teaching, all this stuff going on. We don't have to make everything a battle. We don't have to, like the church, that was the 80s. Everything's got to be a fight. Well, guess what? I didn't write this. Now, hear me. Like, I don't have to go fight for things Jesus has already done for me. I get that. Like, I can agree with heaven, but there's still a fight. And how I know that is this word tells me, and there's armor. There's, you don't go to the grocery store in armor. You go, to, I see people, like, we're not going to talk about Walmart, but. <laughs> I sure, I'm, I guarantee you that there's, there's some sights to see at the grocery store. Sometimes it's pajamas and slippers. You know why? They don't think they're going to a war. This battle is powerful, it's real, and it's at a spiritual level. And this word tells me that there's ranks and levels of this spiritual battle. There's also spirits of the heavenly realm. I, I, I want to encourage somebody, your battle isn't there. God, God has us here on this earth for a reason, you know who I'm to confront? You know what demons I'm to confront? The ones here on this earth. We get all these people and people teaching, oh, we're going to call down this, the prince of the air of... No, you're not. My Bible tells me in Daniel that was angelic battle. There's heavenly hosts and angels that are battling at that level. Don't kid yourself. Those things are powerful and they have, they have rule and reign in those areas. They have, we don't, we have here. 
When Jesus walked on this earth, you're going to remember that he went to the synagogue's teaching, he went and healed, and he cast out devils and demons of those who were on this earth. This dimension, this level, that's what level we deal with. And the battle that we're in is that. It's not this mystical stuff like, I don't understand all that. I don't know. And I, and I, I started going down the road. I said, Lord, the Lord was like, you don't need to go deal, deal with all that. You need to teach and equip for here. This is where your battle is. This is where your battle is. I, I can get in enough trouble here. The church had going to get in a lot of trouble in places I don't even belong. And then maybe I'm not a superhuman Christian enough. Duh. No, I'm not. I know who I am, and I know who I'm not. Now, if the Lord wants to go with me and take me somewhere, he can take me to some place that I can't get to. But until he does that, I'm fighting here. If you want to go to there, go have fun. I ain't going with you. I'm serious. If God calls you, great, go have fun. I'm going to go where he's called me. He said, I'm to take authority here on this earth. I'm his representative here. Are you with me? But we don't even do that. We want to pretend it's not real. We want to stay in the flesh and blood battle. We want to fight people and situations. But Jesus is calling us and Paul's telling us, hey, your battle is not that. Your battle is spiritual. And it's for real. It's, it's for keeps, guys. Like, it's a responsibility. I like pastoring. I love, I love doing what God's called me to do. But there's certain parts of it I don't like. This is part of it. I'm responsible to get and wake up people. I'm responsible in this last, I believe in this final generation season or hour, these young people, and the, you're, they are going to be mighty, mighty, and they are even now. I'm responsible to get people to eyes to open, to get the church to pay attention, to realize we're in a battle, and it's for real. And it's for keeps, and it involves souls that are eternal. It's not this flesh and blood thing, okay, I killed you, it's up. No, it's eternal. And souls are in the balance. And you know who knows that? Satan knows it. That's why he wants to keep you caught up in this natural stuff and get all messed up on the news and do all this other stuff and get so spun up and you're dealing with the carnal that you can't take the time to get into the spiritual. Because that's where the battle is. It's okay. You can clap. It's not in my notes. Where did we stop reading? Did I even finish? Lord, help me. Therefore, in light of all that, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Again, I'm pretty sure that the Lord knew we weren't going to take the whole armor. He's saying it over and over again. The whole armor that you, not your brother, not your mother, not your dad, not your sister, you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now, I ain't the sharpest guy, but I'm pretty sure our physical position in this isn't laying down. Because he said, withstand, stand, stand therefore. So that means that you're on your feet. That doesn't mean you're in your easy chair. It doesn't mean... I'm just going to keep my eyes closed and pretend everything is awesome. It's all good. There's nothing bad going on outside. All this stuff, it's not demonic. It's not. Now, hear me. I'm not saying there's a devil behind every little thing. Like, you can get way out of bounds in that and go, oh, my gosh, my dog's possessed. No, your dog's a dog. <laughs> now, also in balance, like, we are in a war 
And there's demonic forces that hate you and your family and everything that is light. And it's opposed to it. And I believe, as the enemy knows his time is wrapping up, he's going to unleash as much as he possibly can, especially against those whose eyes are open. Especially to those who put the armor on, who go into the fight and are purposely going after his kingdom and causing havoc, which, oh man, I want to cause so much havoc. I got so mad at him the other day, I was like, oh, it's on. You ever get, you're just like, it's on. And I'm not saying in my own strength, like I didn't go like, I'm going to go shake my fist at you and show yourself and we're going to fight. No, that'd be stupid. I'm like, it's on. I'm like, I'm pressing into the Lord even more. You, you think Oh, I'm not going out there. This will be an easy fight. He's going to chew me up and spit me out. He would love for me to come out in my nakedness. Oh, what he don't want to see is me in full armor, with a sword, with daddy walking with me. He's like, yeah, we're going to choose another opportunity. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breast. You see your responsibilities here? Put on the breastplate of righteousness. And, and we're going to get into all that. We just won't today. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts. I like that. You can quench all the fiery darts. That's good news. But you're going to have to have a shield. It's called faith. Faith will, will extinguish and put out every fiery dart of the enemy. But you're going to have to choose believe or unbelief. Faith or doubt. Doubt, every one of those are going to land. And you're going to be like, God, what the heck? What are you allowing? Oh, you put me in this spot. No. You have a shield. It's called faith. I told you you're in a battle and a war. How about put some clothes on? Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, helmet got my attention in the first service. I hadn't planned on this, but when I rode motorcycles for the, well, most of my life until the last motorcycle, I always liked either no helmet or basically no helmet. <laughs> like the little half one that's just, it's there so you don't get a ticket. <laughs> the, most of the time I even wore one, it was not even a dot helmet, it was just a novelty item. It was <laughs> like, like you could take it and fold it. But once I got the different motorcycle, and really the only thing that I put, I was riding Jonathan's and, and I had my little half helmet on and I said, I want to go take that for a day. And he's like, Put on a full helmet. I'm like, no, I hate those things. I can't hear and I can't see. He's like, dude, that thing looks, you look stupid. <laughs> He's like, you can't ride this motorcycle. Like, Harley's yes, not this. And I'm like, I'm doing it anyways. And then I, I and some of you have seen this before. You'll see someone with that helmet on those kinds. And you're like, yeah, I, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but I had to put on a full face helmet. And at first I didn't like it. I didn't, it was heavy, it felt a little more uncomfortable, had to, my neck had to get kind of used to holding that weight, I, it was different vision-wise, but after a while, I got used to that, and I actually, it's comfortable, I, I, there's actually some good things about having a, a windshield once in a while, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> you get to certain speeds, and it's like, your eyes are watering, I can't really see, like, oh, oh, that works out pretty good, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Just saying. But I said ought to say, don't, don't not keep putting the armor on because at first it feels a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Or at first you're not quite used to it. Keep putting it on. Yeah, right. Keep putting it on. You're going to start figuring out and finding out, like, you know what? This is really good. This actually has benefits. This, this actually works. I don't know who that was for, but... He goes on, in the sword of the Spirit. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
Now, I used to think that was the only offensive weapon. And as we get going in some of this, it's pretty cool. Like, the Lord, the Lord actually does warfare so awesome. I love the fact that he, like, you think you know how to fight, and he don't fight fair. You think, like, God does not fight fair. He, oh, he will use all kinds of stuff. He, he is like, oh, you have a helmet. And it's not just so that it protects you. Like, you can headbutt people with your helmet. And I don't mean people, but demons. Like, you just, it, there's, the, whack. Like, yes. Remember I tell you, I'm like, I love the word because it's an offensive weapon. I don't like just to be defensive. Like, I don't just want to cover up and block. And like, at some point, I want to hit you back. Like, you're hitting me. I want to hit you back. I want you to quit hitting me. There's a, all of that defensive stuff still. Oh, it's on. Like, you can, you can like, your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel. That's to dig in there. But you can also kick. And there's spikes on the end of those things. That's awesome. Big old shield that you could thump people with. I mean, people, I'm talking demons. It's not just like cover up and withstand. No, you've got an arsenal of stuff. And then you've got a sword that you could stab people with. Because it's on. You're going to see how close combat it is. He knows what you need, church. And he knows how to use it. And if you actually do it, it ain't fair. It ain't fair for the enemy. He ain't going to stand a chance. But if you don't do what he says, because he says, doing all to stand. If we'll, if we'll do everything he says, you will withstand. But here, let me tell you, if you don't do it how he said to do it, you will not withstand. You won't. I won't. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. That sounds pretty serious. You know how, like, a lot of times I don't think we understand, like, how do you pray all the time? That comes from people who do not believe they're in a war. Think about it. Well, how do you pray all the time? Well, it's just a figurative thing. I don't believe that anymore. You know what? I haven't been in a real war, but I've been in some, like, small wars. <laughs> but I can't, like, if you're in a war and there's bombs dropping, there's bullets flying. I, I, if anyone's ever felt bullets go by you, I've, I have felt that. Like, it's different. You're going to pray a little more. You're going to be a little more consistent about before you go out, Lord, I want you to be with me. God, I, I need your help. God, I don't have all the answers. I'm going to need you to walk with me today. Lord, I'm going to ask for your covering and your protection. God, let my enemies be jacked up today. I pray you jack up their sights. I pray that every crosshair is crooked. I, right? You're going to have lots of things to pray for. The prayerlessness of the church is a, is, a, is a reality that we don't believe we're in a war. We are not, we don't believe that we're even in a fight. Because if we did, we'd be praying. If we really understood the hour and times that we're in, we would, the, the, the intercessory prayer time, the upper room prayer time, it would be packed. If we really believed. Praying in the spirit, being watchful, not asleep, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and suffocation for all the saints. And when you think you're done praying, start praying for someone else. There's a lot to pray for. Wow. Well, we must know his armor and our weapons. One thing I hope you saw was it wasn't in your strength and it wasn't your armor. It's you must know his armor. See, that's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing when you think, you, oh, I've got my armor. I, I, know, I know what I'm going out to do. Like we get comfortable in our day-to-day, -day, especially when you've done something a lot, over and over, you go to the same place of work, or you go, you're used to, go, well, I know what I need. That's not what this is saying. This is saying you need to put on his armor. 
Like, you don't really know what you need. None of us do. Which brings me to the beginning of this is, it didn't say be strong in yourself, it said be strong in the Lord. And in order for us to recognize that, you need to understand that your power is not enough. This is really what I'm trying to get across today, is that your strength is not enough. This is one of the biggest tricks of the devil, to get us to believe and think that our strength is enough. You can do this. You got this. And to minimize the reality of that, without him, you can do nothing. How many, like, you know, like, you, you know that's the truth, is what I'm asking. You know that's the truth. I'm not asking if you believe it. If you believe it, then there's actions that come with it. This, this, we got to get out of just theologically knowing things into knowing them through us doing them. Does that make sense? Like, it's got to get not just head knowledge, it's got to become who we are. It's got to become a reality. It's got to come into practice in our life. What does that look like? We, well, we realize in order for me to ever see the need to put on all the armor of God, I have to first believe that I need it. That sounds so simple, but we went way past that. Like, and I know because we're not wearing it. Which tells me we don't really believe that we need it. Which tells me we are full of pride. I don't know how else to say that. When you think you can go take on the devil without your armor, without the way that God says that you're to do that, you're in trouble. Pride comes before a fall. And Satan will be laughing the whole time going, yep, come on. Keep coming. Oh, you're right. You're bad. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yep. You, you beat me last time. You're right. That worked last time. Come on. Church, it's a new day. There's a, there's a saying. I, it's not, I don't know how biblical it is, but it's new level, new devil. You might have been okay fighting that demon down there at that level. But if you're growing at all, and if you've been in this church for the last two or three years, you're growing. New level, new devil. And where this church is headed... New devils. You best get your armor on. You best understand that we're playing for keeps. And, we, and the game is souls. And it's forever. Jesus didn't hide that. You know, Jesus didn't please everybody. I don't, I don't know how many times i got to say that. Like, I don't know if, if you read your Bible, you're going to see that a lot of people didn't like Jesus. You know Why? Because he told the truth. And he did it perfectly in perfect love. Love incarnate was on this earth and walked on this earth. And so lovingly, as lovingly it could ever happen, told the truth in power and set people free and healed people. But he did speak the truth and they hated him for it. So no, church, and I'm not trying to scare you, but just know if you're gonna, if you're gonna do this thing. If you're going to get engaged in the fight, you're going to have a lot of opposition. And I'm not even talking about demons right now. I'm talking about the church. How real are we going to get? That's pretty real. I tell you, I've been stabbed more from Christians than non-Christians. At least non-Christians, I expect that. It was the religious people that crucified Jesus. It was the religious people. And it wasn't like that was a one-time thing. They tried to kill him multiple times. And Jesus said, okay, for what are you, you going to try to kill me for this time? Is it for the truth? Or, is it, or are you going to try to kill me for the miracle? Because if you don't even see the truth of who I am, at least look at the miracles. Are you gonna, which, which miracle are you going to try to kill me for this time? So church, I, I, I'm not saying like, it's not our mission to get people mad at us or to go against us. There's, you have to bring the truth and you must do it in love, inspired by love, by Christ. But even when you do it that way, they're going to hate you. They're going to hate you. Jesus didn't, he said, 
They hated me. They will hate you. And church, I don't know how to say this. And I don't mean just this church. I mean church. The world really doesn't hate the church very much because the church isn't really much of a threat. The church doesn't really come against much. It's starting to. Roe versus Wade is getting turned around. There's starting to be an awakening. There's starting to be a rattling. But for the most part, we come in here, we go, yay, praise the Lord. Awesome. I felt the presence of the Lord. And we go back and nothing really changes. That's got to stop. Like, it's got, it's a confrontation. Like, when darkness and light hit, it's not like, oh, it blends together. Oh, so nice. No, it's like, <laughs> and lights need to quit playing with darkness. Like, this spiritual stuff it's talking about it says the spirit of darkness. So how can we play around with darkness? Because he's telling us that darkness is demonically inspired. No matter how, what bows you put on and what lipstick you put on and how you dress it up, it's inspired by demons, and it's going to have an effect on you. I'm not getting on a, I'm not talking like holiness. You've been made holy. Jesus is, makes you holy. I'm not saying what you dress. I'm saying listen to the Holy Spirit. If it looks evil, it looks like it's dark, it smells like death, and there's no life in it, it's not for you. That's your enemy. Light, dark, good, evil. They are at opposition with one another. That will make some people mad at you. Some people even right now are mad at me. That's okay. I still love you. And I'm going to still tell you the truth. Because this is for real. And if you get offended, but you get woke up and you put your armor on, Hallelujah. <laughs> or if you get offended and the Holy Spirit comes alongside and goes, you know, that was the truth. And you quit going in the area that's allowing the enemy to demonize you. Praise God. I don't know if you noticed, I haven't said a specific topic or thing. I'm not saying, oh, if you do this, if you do that. If... I'm not saying that. Let the Holy Spirit do that. I'm not your convictor. I'm preaching the truth. The Holy Spirit's going to convict. So if you get mad about conviction, then get mad at him. And see how well that works for you. About as good as you getting mad at me. Because I'm, like I'm kind of over caring. I hope you hear me. I'm not over loving. I'm not over loving, but I'm getting over caring. And it's coming on kind of quick. No, I, I, I can't afford to. You know, it's not about me. You guys think I'm messing around. Like what I'm telling you, I'm, I literally wrote on my mirror, which my wife wasn't super excited about. <laughs> yes, with a Sharpie. It's a, I want it to be on there. It's not about you, about this height. And then I put love. She goes, what's that part mean? Well, I'm supposed to lay down my life for others. That's what love's supposed to look like. I can't do that if it's about me. So I can't care too much about what you think about what I'm saying. Because I naturally want to. I naturally want to go, oh, they don't like that. Don't stay off that. Oh, uh, they, they're going to leave if I, uh, uh, I'm not giving, I'm not giving an account for that. I'm giving an account for this truth going out in this day and age. That's what I'm giving account for. Now I am, hold on. I am responsible to bring it in a way that you will receive it and be loved by God through it. I'm responsible for that. I don't want to just smash people and, oh, you're sinners. You're going to hell. I hope that's not my heart. I want you to equip yourselves. I want you to understand you cannot do this on your own. 
I don't want to see people get bitten and devoured by the enemy because that's what he does. I don't like seeing it. I don't like seeing people come every week or for years and years and still be asleep while the war's going on and they're getting beat up and shot at and destroyed and they're not standing. I don't want to see it. Be strong in the Lord, not yourself. You got to first understand your power is not enough. Gideon did. He said, You want me to do what? I'm the weakest of the weakest clan or of the weakest tribe of the weakest clan. Like, you don't get weaker than me. I'm in a spot threshing the wheat that you're not supposed to be in to thresh wheat because I don't want the enemy to see me. And the angel of the Lord says, the Lord's with you, mighty warrior. He's like, who are you talking to? Is there someone else in here? I don't see no one else. Mighty warrior. I believe Paul understood this. Man, we're not going to get very far today. God bless me. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 12. You guys, you're going to think I'm crazy, but seriously, that's where we got. We're, we're right here. We're, we're right there. Second Corinthians chapter 12. This was, a, this was a Holy Spirit little deal that the Lord dropped in my lap, and I was like, that perfectly says what you're trying to say to me. Paul has wrestled with the Lord. He has this thorn in the flesh that, that, wasn't, that God allowed Satan to do. And he prays three times, God, take this from me. So he says three different times, I begged the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, this is Jesus' words, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and the hardships and the persecutions and the troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is a principle we need to get. If we don't really get this, we've lost the battle in the war. It's in, Paul understood, and, and Paul, I believe, began to get, he had some, he was caught up into heaven. He saw things that men don't see. He, he accomplished things for God, and God used him mightily, and I think it's kind of natural. And I'm not saying I know everything about Paul. This is Steve Dennison's idea on this, so I hope you hear me. This is my idea. You, but I believe maybe Paul was starting to get some pride. Or I maybe believe maybe the Lord didn't want Paul to start getting too much pride. Or maybe the Lord didn't want Paul to get too strong in his own strength. So he allowed Satan to put a thorn in his flesh that would keep Paul in a state of weakness and knowing that, you know what, I, don't, I haven't attained it yet. Remember Paul's writings. I haven't obtained it yet. There's still work to do. And he began to learn that in my weakness, in my areas that I've failed God, in my areas that I've messed up, in my areas that I haven't got victory, that is where God is going to use me to stay strong. That's the truth. In the areas that you think you've got it all figured out and you've walked it out and you've been doing it for 20 years, you think that's a strong suit in your life. Wrong. The Lord had me go share a word with someone one time and you might think I like, I hate doing it, honestly, especially this was someone I have so much respect for and I love to death. And they were in a very, very bad place. Um, just, I won't, I'm not going to go into more of that. And the Lord said, I want you to go share this word. They are not seeing the attack coming because this is an area of their strength. They can't see the attack because this is a strong area in them. And it hit me. So I was like, oh my gosh. Because I instantly went, oh, the enemy's having a heyday in my life in areas that I think I'm strong. Because when you think you're strong, you don't have the eyesight to even think about looking and protecting that area. You need to hear this. That's why it says, put on the whole armor. How about 
but I'm like ripped in my chest and my upper body, and I've got so much. Yeah, go ahead and put the breastplate of righteousness on there. But I've got a hard head. Yeah, not hard enough. But I've fought 15 times without the helmet. Yeah, but where you're headed, you're going to need the helmet. Just go ahead and put that helmet on. And guess what? When you think you've got a very, very hard head and you don't need to wear your helmet, the enemy's like, yes. I ain't the sharpest guy. Where do you think he's going to aim? Let's go. I'm going to keep hitting all this armor and nothing's happening. No, he's not going to go after the armored area. He's looking right here. And you're thinking, I got this. So the areas that you think you're strong, be careful. Pride comes before a fall. This is a powerful, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. He says, for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. He goes on, he says, you take your stand. Church, you take your stand. We're all in a battle, but you have to take your stand. Mom can't do it for you. Dad can't do it for you. Pastor can't do it for you. Grandma and grandpa can't do it for you. You got to take your stand. You have to put on your armor because there's a devil that's after you. Stand your ground against the devil's schemes. That's a Greek word that says methodia. It means trickery, wile, lying in wait, traveling over. Like the enemy's just waiting. Like he's waiting for you to come by and he's hiding out and he's just waiting for the opportunity. Oh, I don't see. They don't have, they don't have truth on today. That's where I'm going to go. Oh, they didn't put the breastplate on. Sweet. That's the area I'm going to. I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to weigh a little bit. They got it all on, but let's just see. By the end of the day, it might get heavy and hot. They might start taking stuff off. That's how he works. He is patient. He will be like, oh, yeah, and he will speak all kinds of stuff to you. Oh, you're right. It's hot. You don't need, It's super hot. Oh, you know what the, the news said? It's going to be 112 tomorrow. No one would want to put armor on. Put on your shorts and go swimming. That's how he works. Don't watch the news. You know what? My Bible's telling me that there's a war going on, and I'm in it, and it's for real. It, you know, armor sometimes is a little uncomfortable, but it feels really good when you're taking shots. It's not uncomfortable then. Helmets feel good when you hit your head. The idea he's lying in wait for a slip-up. And I don't mean by you making a mistake. A slip-up I'm talking about is you not putting your armor on. Guess what? If you have your armor on and you trip and fall, you still got your armor on. You got your armor on, you do something stupid, you still got your armor on. You're still ready to fight. You still know you're in a battle. He's just looking for a weak spot so he can exploit it. Again, we've already been defeated if we don't think we need all the armor. You've already lost the battle. It's over. If you don't think you need all of God's armor, it's over. You won't be able to withstand. Look at that verse in 13. I just want to hit that again. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. I would circle done all. That tells me if you haven't done all, you won't withstand. Does that make sense? He's telling us having done all so that you will withstand on that day. And he tells us three times, withstand, stand. And having done all, stand. If you haven't done all, you won't stand. It's a war we're all in together, but we each have our own battles. I can't fight my battle for you. You can't fight my battle. You have to fight the one that's in front of you. I asked the first service, is there anyone in here who wrestled? You wrestled in high school or you wrestled one year, actually wrestled. Is there anybody who actually wrestled? Someone that actually wrestled that's somewhere close to my size, come up here. We're not going to, like, 
get on the ground. Well, we might get on the ground, but we're not going to, like, fight. But I, need, I needed this example. It says we wrestle. It doesn't say we taekwondo. Hear me. It doesn't say we box. It says we wrestle, and wrestling is up close and personal. Of any sport I've ever done, i played football, baseball, basketball, and sometimes, but you're not always, like, up close and personal. Wrestling, you are up close and personal. You are always in contact. So you would just get in our, how you would get down. And there's, there's, you're wrestling for, like, even hand. If I can get my hand, he doesn't want my, my hands to get up to his head. So at first, your hand grabs. And I'm right here. I'm going to take you down. It ain't going to happen. All right? Like, I'm going to try to get down and get, get into a, a, get his leg. And I'll, if you can go down, you know how that works. Yep. This is the, what he said, wrestle. The other person will come down here. And I'm right here. Where, where am I? I'm right in his ear. You're going to go down. I'm taking you down. You're never going to get up. I'm going to crush you. <laughs> How, I'm always in contact. I'm glad he didn't take me down. <laughs> <laughs> you are always up close and personal in wrestling. You always have contact. You don't want to, I want to have my hand on his hand. I don't want his hand getting to me. You're always moving around, and it's personal. It's close. It's not boxing. Boxing, you can come out, go to your corners. We're going to dance around a little bit and keep a distance. Wrestling, it's up close and personal. This is the fight we're in. How many of you hear it? It's like right there. I'm hearing things. Yeah. But you have a mouth. I don't know about you, but once you get tired, I'm, like, I'm tired of hearing that. So check this out. Yeah, you may have won the last match, but it ain't, you ain't winning this one. Because I understand I've been fighting naked, and that's over. I understand what we're doing. I understand we're not playing. Well, I'm playing for keeps right now. You're not going to take me out. You're not taking out my family. You're not taking out my loved ones. I'm going to keep in contact with you. You think you're pressing me? I'm pressing you. I'm coming after you. And I'm not coming alone. I'm done fighting alone. I'm coming with my daddy. And he don't lose and he don't fight fair. And he's trained me and he's equipped me. And he's, given, he's called me a son. And he's given me an arsenal of weapons. And I'm not afraid to use them. So I'm just letting you know. You better brought your lunchbox. I'm not done. I didn't hear no bell. Let's go. Let's keep going. You got to get that mindset because I don't know about you, but talk, people keep talking. That devil keeps talking. At some point, you got to shut them up. You got to get your mind right and go, wait a minute. The weapons of this warfare are not carnal. They're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. So I'm not going to fight this fight in the natural. I'm not going to come against this as this is a personal thing. No, it's a spiritual thing. And if I don't engage this, it's over. That's where we're at, guys. In the, in the Roman times in wrestling, the loser of the contest, not every time, but a lot of the times when they would have these big contests in wrestling, the loser of the contest could have their eyes gouged, gouged out. Now, that sounds like something, but I tell you what, what it sounds like to me is way more lethal in the spiritual side of this. We've been talking about prophecy and holding on to things. Having your eyes gouged out means you lost vision. Let that sink in. When you're wrestling against the enemy and you're fighting against the enemy and you're losing and you lose that fight, your eyes are going to get gouged out. You're going to start losing vision. You're going to not be able to see clearly. You're not going to be able to see the visions and the things that God has for you. He's going to be able to rob those things from you. You're going to be blind. That's what he's after. We're going to hold on to, prof to prophecy. We're going to hold on to the visions, to the dreams, to the things that God has given us. And we're going to contend for them. And losing is not an option. You can't afford to lose. You can't afford to not recognize you're in a battle. You can't afford to not recognize that he's playing for keeps. 
You can't afford to not put on all of the armor of God. If you're not saved, you can't afford to wait. Because you think you're flying naked. All the fiery darts, you're taking all of them. Even you Christians, if, you, if you're not putting on the armor of God, you're not walking in it. And that's what having it on is you're walking in it. You can theologically say, well, I'm righteous. Well, if you're not walking in righteousness, you're not righteous. That's theory. Sounds good. I know helmets work good. Well, if you don't wear it, it ain't going to do nothing for you. Having a knowledge of how great helmets are doesn't do anything for you. Having a knowledge of you could be the greatest wrestler in your mind. What are you going to do in that day? Don't allow your previous failures to keep you from going forward. Here's what I, church, those areas that you have, I've wrestled and I've, I got whooped in that area and I've, I tried it again, but I got beat. Now you're believing there's no way I can beat him. I remember the one year I wrestled, I never wrestled before and I did pretty decent. Then there was this one guy he'd wrestled. I was in eighth grade. He'd probably wrestled since kindergarten for real. For real, like, it was the, like there were wrestlers, like no joke. Now, the first time he beat me, he didn't pin me. I only got pinned by him one time. But the time that he pinned me is I was already beaten my mind. I was sick. I was physically sick. I didn't feel good. And I knew, like, I wrestled some of the other guys and won, but I'm like, oh, man, I got to, it was me and him again. I was already done. I'm like, that guy's been wrestling forever. I'm sick. I don't feel good. I let him pin me. After, after we wrestled for a while, I was like, I'm done. That's no bueno. That's what the devil wants. He wants you to, like, look, looking back at your previous failures. That's why Paul said, forgetting what's behind. I'm pressing on towards what's ahead. Now, here's the cool thing. If you failed, if you messed up, if you've lost a few battles, the smart thing is, like, I'm not strong in that area. Lord, I'm going to need some help. That area, I keep getting whooped on. And he's probably going to say, here's some armor. And I'm going to come with you. So that area now is a strength. What the enemy is trying to keep you from, it's like, here's what I know about the devil. He takes great risk in areas that he attacks us. Because God is so good, he will bring those things to light. And I've watched over and over in the areas that the enemy has attacked me in one. If I will go to the Lord, the Lord will expose the plan of the enemy. And he will get, equip me and give me the tools to be able to beat him in that area. And now I've got victory. And now I've got tools and weapons. And now I can help other people. That's what God wants to do. So don't let the weaknesses and the areas that you've been beat up in or the areas that you've lost matches before keep you from going forward. Why don't you stand to your feet? Lord, we didn't even get one piece of armor on. But uh, the, the most important thing, Lord, is we're already, we're done if we don't believe that we need you. We've already lost if we don't see that it's in our weakness that you make us strong. It's in us understanding we don't have all the answers. We don't know how to fight this war completely. We can't do it on our own. Lord, we have failed repeatedly over and over, but God, one thing we're going to do differently, Lord, we're going to accept the fact that we know we can't do this in our own strength. We aren't going to continue doing the same things over and over, expecting different results. Lord, we're going to realize that apart from you, we can do nothing. Lord, we recognize that we're in a battle. We recognize that this warfare is heating up, but Lord, we th also recognize that we haven't been engaged we haven't been fully equipped. We haven't been uh, even believing that we're in a battle. We're not putting on the armor. We're not going and praying. We're not, we're not seeking you. We're not putting the things that you want us to do above the things that we want to do. We're not recognizing that we've been in areas of darkness and we're being influenced by the demonic realm, which gives agreement to that and gives that power. So we're going to break ties with the demonic. We're not going to come into agreement with the dark areas of our lives, even the things that we think are harmless. If it's dark, if it's not light, 
If it's evil and it's not good, if it represents death and it's not life, we don't want any part of it. And that's giving influence. So we're going to cut ties and Holy Spirit, hold us to account. Bring that Holy Spirit conviction to our lives when we need it. Let us see very clearly, Lord, the schemes of the enemy so we don't get sidetracked, so we don't get uh, sidetracked and knocked off the path so that we can see where he's uh, trying to work in our life and we'll equip ourselves. Spend some time with the Holy Spirit. Allow him to speak to you. Now, church, he's going to speak to you. And I've got to tell you, you need to be obedient. The times are for rebellion. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion of God. Rebellion against God, which means I hear what you're saying, God, and I'm not going to do it. That's witchcraft. That is the same. Do not participate with that in any way, shape, or form. If you don't know the Lord today, today's the day. If you haven't made him your Lord and Savior, and what that means is that you're laying down your life. You're saying, God, it's not about me anymore. I'm putting my faith and trust in you. I'm believing you for my future. I know apart from you, I can do nothing. I'm tired of doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result. Today's your day. The Bible says if you will call on his name, you will confess with your mouth. You, you confess, God, I'm broken, I'm lost, I need you, I need a savior. And you believe in your heart that Jesus is the only way. He's the only way of salvation. He's the only one that can heal you. He's the only one that can set you free. That he died for your sins and he rose again. You put your faith and trust in him. And you do that today, the Bible says he will make you new. Old things will pass away and everything will come alive anew. And let me tell you, he will give you a new, new eyesight, new ears to hear, a new tender heart that will love and feel the love of God again. And he will train you and equip you like a father does his son. I'm not gonna take a lot of time there. If that's you, just leave your seat and come forward and I'd love to introduce you to Jesus. Don't continue to, to lose this battle. It's for real. You're gonna hear a bunch of different voices. There's plenty of time. You don't need to go do that. You don't need to go down there. That right there proves you that there's a devil who, who's out to steal, kill, and destroy from your life. You wouldn't be hearing that if he didn't hate you. Because God's also calling you and he's saying, come, 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 I wanna free you. Come, I wanna save you. Come, I wanna give you new life. I wanna put a new song in your heart. Go ahead, Becca. Altars are open. If you want to spend some time with the Lord, you can. This is between you and the Lord. Just give him, let him speak to your heart. And then you, if he's speaking things, you make it clear that you're going to do what he's asking you to do. Allow him to shine the light. Don't be afraid of that. Go ahead. So take the land, take the land. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. So Some of you just need to say, Lord, I'm engaging. I'm going to engage in this battle. I'm going to quit sitting on the sideline watching other people fight. If that's you, then engage in that battle right now. No time like the present. So take the land, take the land. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. So take the land, take the land. You're a mighty, 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 mighty warrior. Mighty, 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 mighty warrior. Mighty, 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 mighty warrior. You're a warrior, you're a mighty, 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 mighty warrior, mighty, 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 mighty warrior, mighty, 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 mighty warrior, you're a warrior, 
dressed for battle. And I'm an army dressed for battle. I'm an army dressed for battle. So take the land, take the land. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. So take the land, take the land. The weapons of our warfare, they are mighty through our God. The weapons of our warfare, they are mighty through our God. The weapons of our warfare, they are mighty through our God. The weapons of our warfare, they are mighty through our God. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. So take the land, take the land. You're an army dressed for battle. You're an army dressed for battle. You're if, an army if you need to be dismissed at this time, battle. you can be dismissed. So take the land. Um, if you just just please do that quietly. If you guys want to talk and do all that, you can do that outside in a in fellowship. Um, if you need to be dismissed, you got plans, you need to go somewhere, you're more than welcome to be dismissed. If you want to stay and worship, go ahead and stay and worship in the presence of the Lord. He's a mighty, 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 mighty. 